Okay guys, time for the rear fender or mud guard is coming off. First thing we're going to do is take off the uh, battery terminal. Then we're going to take off the mud guard itself. So to take it off, look, size 5 Allen key, unscrew it. And then what should happen, this bottom bracket will fall off. Okay, so there it is, bottom bracket came off. Now it's just a case of pulling this out, place it to the side. Right, so to remove the battery itself then, grab this little clip, quite difficult. Push down, that will loosen that off. Use the Allen key. I've already started to loosen these off just for the purpose of this. Take off the negative terminal or connection and then you need to undo this screw. As you can see I've already undone mine on the positive terminal. Quite hard to get in there so got a posi screwdriver head attached to an adjustable, placed it into it, loosened it off enough that I can use it with my finger and then just take off the posi terminal without losing the screw and you should be able to pull the battery out. battery out. All you simply have to do is lift it up over here, it's quite hard to do this with just one hand but once it's, once it's over the lip, just pull it out. Okay, so mine's still connected. I'm gonna have to disconnect. Oh, there we go. There we go. And she's out. Okay, battery's out. Now, I need to take off the mud guard. So, roll it back around. Obviously, it might look a bit different. I've just taken the license plate off, that's all. The rear light cluster still the same. So, we go over to here. Now, this bolt needs to come. Alright, so that's the nut and been loosened off. As you can see, like the line, you need to mark it on the base plate, not just on the washer. Take that off. Now, we're going to push this bolt through to the other side. So to get the uh, chain off the wheel then, first just move the brake pad, move that out of the way so it frees you up a bit of space. Next thing then, lift the tyre right up to the top of the mud guard. That'll give you this the free space then to lift the chain over the cog and the wheel free. You just move the wheel out of the way. And then we're good to take the mud guard off. All right, then next step: undo this little star nut and bolt here. Same on the other side. I've actually taken that off already because that one was where the uh, uh, chain guard was attached to. That's been that's been long gone. And then the whole reason for taking the wheel off is to make it easier to get the these. With the wheel on, I'm serious, that's gonna be a lot harder. Take them two out, and then these either side. All right, and uh, I'll do that now. Alright guys, so that's the fender off, or mudguard. Now, 
I need to get the uh, the wire in basically it's on the rear tail light so I need to use that on on my next bit so simply just undo these and then take out the wire the wiring loom I'm gonna unravel it all so that I can then fit that wiring into my new system okay so the next step is to fit the Kellerman Atos so this is what they come like in the box very okay nice. guys I'm gonna go through how to use the harness and wire them into the Atos if you're not interested in this bit you just want to see the uh, results then skip this part okay so this is the Moton wiring harness just here these are the Kelamanatos okay and this is the November customs mount and what I'll go through now is how to wire each of these up so the first thing then you need the left hand Atto you need the grey wire and that will go to the brown wire on the harness then you need to right hand indicator the grey wire then goes to the orange wire on the harness then the tail light so both grey and white wires on each atto they will come back and go into the yellow uh, wire on the harness the brake lights there's a grey and red wire on each atto into the red wire on the harness and then the to earth or the neutral on both atos need to go into the earth or the neutral on the uh, harness that's how the atos are wired up and then there's also a auxiliary connection which is for your license plate light to get the wheel back on guys it's pretty much the reverse the only difference is now I'm placing on the uh, side plate or the side plate mount place that on then the brake so the brake pad put that through okay I had to open up the pads I was literally just push the, the pad itself back against there so that the disc there'd be enough space for the disc get the rod or the spindle push that through the wheel itself all the way around and then lifted the wheel up so that I could place the chain on at that point just got the chain onto a couple of the bottom spikes and it started to rotate the wheel forwards and then that would uh, I basically pick the chain up onto the cog once the chain was on push the remaining spindle through and then place the washer and the bolt back on I'm gonna have to torque this up to uh, 110 Newton meters torque all right so just gonna torque this up to 110 as per this triumph manual so there we are click okay so as you can see now then all the wiring is done I've run it through the bike up onto the autos and then into the battery box what I'm going to do now is connect the battery do a quick test make sure that it all works once it's working then I'm going to basically tape up all the wiring, neaten it up, hide it away, and then we're good to go. Just push this battery back in, not all the way. I'm just going to do a test first. I'll put the negative back onto the earth. Live back onto the positive connection. And then just double check that every wire is back to its original position so before you take it apart take a photo and then cross reference your photo with how you rewire it as long as all the earthing points are the same the live are the same you're good to go all right moment of truth let's turn it on there we 
you see tail lights they're all good it's just uh, indicator is good but as you can see the pulse rate is far too fast Good indicator there, test the brakes. Yeah, good brakes. And then hazards are good as well. So just turn it off. Right, the case, we're gonna sort that pulse rate out. So you need to hold down the information button and turn the engine on at the same time. It's going to be hard for me to do with one hand and record, so here we go. Push down the information button. Turn on the engine. Keep the information button depressed. And a type comes up. Okay, so standard setting is type 3. We need a type 4 for these Kalamanados. Once you've switched it over to type 4, then you can repress the information button okay type goes off and then has the bike reset and we just do a test there we go we got the normal pulse rate for the UK just type 4 on the Kalamanatos do the right hand side as well good to go alright so before putting the battery back in make sure you've got this battery strap connected on the back wall so batteries pushed back in get the uh, this little clip pull it down hook it back into position all I need to do now is place the pause back on neg back on and then put the cover on top Okay, so all I've done there is place the battery case back on. Negative, positive terminals were connected. Place the battery case exactly as it came off. Uh, to make it easier, just to tuck the cables away. I took the side panel off and then just push that back on. Got that nice. 